Bradford, Connecticut. Amen. 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 I was glad when they said it to me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we are here to worship, to praise you, to adore you, and to witness to the world of your great love and sacrifice. Come now and be with us in this service. Magnify not us, but magnify your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us stand for the morning hymn, hymn number 389. I love to tell the story.
believed in God the Father Almighty, and gave us that in earth, and in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered of the Pontius Father, was crucified, buried, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
right in. Our scripture lesson this morning is John, the 20th chapter, beginning at verse 19. John, the 20th chapter, beginning at verse 19. Thank you. 
Father God, we have so many concerns. To, sub to submit unto you on this Sunday morning. We have the tears and the anguish of so many members of our community who are suffering from shock, fear, anxiety, and turmoil. Folk, oh Lord, who've been pushed in a corner and seemingly have nowhere else to turn. But we are here this morning with some good news. Good news on Sunday morning. That the God who has brought us thus far has promised never to leave us nor yes. forsake us. We come this morning yes. uttering the words of Jesus to those who will now linger in sadness and sorrow. Yes. Lo, he tells us, I am with you always, even until the end of the earth. We are not alone in the struggle because God is with us. Amen. We're not alone with the trials and temptations because God has already brought us a mighty long way. And he will not forsake us now. He'll break every chain. He'll, he'll wipe every fevered brow. He'll stand with us in every molehill, every valley low, and he will bring us to great heights. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. He is the God who sits high and looks low. Yeah. He is the God who will pick God. us up and put a fence all around Thank us. He is the God who will help us when no one else is there. Yeah, oh, this morning we're rejoicing to know yeah, that our Savior lives. We yeah. rejoice to yeah. know that we are not alone in our fight. We rejoice to know God still saves, yeah. still delivers, Thank still you, heals, Jesus. and still forgives. Yeah. Oh, come this morning, Heavenly Father, one more time. Meet us where we are with eyes closed. Meet us where we are with hearts in dismay. Meet us where we are one more time. And breathe on us your power. Yes, breathe on us your yes, love. Yes, God. Oh, come, Lord Jesus. Help us to magnify your name. Come, Lord Jesus, and help us just to remember from whence we've come. Come, Lord Jesus, and put clapping in our hands and stomping in our feet. For we want to witness to the world that even if we try to hold our peace, the rocks will cry out.
Secretary is asking that St. Stephen's would uh, do donations for baby items. It's for the Harvard District Conference, and the goal this year is 500,000 baby items. So St. Stephen's, let's do our part. April 21st is Bible study via Zoom. Prayer group is May 1st at 9.30. And the third checkup meeting was changed from yesterday until today um, at 3 o'clock via Zoom. I put some flyers out in the vestibule on the table so that you can take one to get the meeting ID number and the passcode. That's it. Thank you. I'm so happy to have with us from South Carolina, <laughs> Brenda Sinclair and John Sinclair, my sister and brother-in-law. Amen. 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 Amen.
right here on, uh, I want to say Main Street. I don't know the streets out here. And we came to get our feet fit. And uh, it was our week off. And we said, you know, we're going to be running this summer. And we're going to get some good shoes for our feet. And we're going to, so that way we can run. And um, I think on that Tuesday or Wednesday, I can't remember what day it was out here in Brampton. My wife sent me a text message. And she said, baby.
in the 19th chapter of the book of the Gospel of John, the 19th verse, it is on the first day of the week, and Jesus finds the disciples behind a locked door. And he enters and says unto them, Peace be unto you. And then he breathes on them and tells them to receive the Holy Ghost. I, I, I want to just talk about fear and faith in America. Fear and faith. If you read from the King James Version, it says that the doors were closed. Mm -hmm. But if you were to read this from the NIV Version, it tells you that the doors were locked for fear of the Jews. The doors were closed, King James Version says. But the NIV says to dramatize the fear of the disciples. For their fear of the Jews, that the doors were locked. I want you to understand this text in the way that John would want us to see it. There are ten disciples who are locked in a room, fearful and terrified. These, these are disciples that, that Jesus had mentored and tutored. These were disciples that on more than one occasion he said to them, fear not. When they, when they saw him walking on the water and the water was boisterous and and it looked like the ship was having problems. Jesus said, fear not. I'm here. Amen. I'm here. When he <clears throat> tried to explain to him about the finality of all mankind, that each of us must one day bow down to dust, be death, and cry from dust I am to dust I shall return. When Jesus was trying to say to them at 33 years of age, he tried to tell them that I'm going to Jerusalem where they have slain the prophets, but let not your hearts be trained. Fear and faith. <clears throat> if you have faith, believe in God. Or even better than that, in my Father's house yeah, yeah. are many mansions. Yeah. And if it were not so, I would have told you. But here, here are these ten disciples. One has already committed suicide. One is so doubtful that, he, that he's on his own. His, they call him Doubting Thomas. <laughs> but the other 10, they're up there in the upper room. And I, I wanted to be there with them. I was wondering what was going on in my mind. And I'm thinking, this is the first day of the week. This is the day that the women went to the tomb and, and found it empty. But they weren't there. They were afraid. They had not seen what the women had seen. They had not seen that the stone had been rolled away. They did not see the angel looking like lightning sitting on top of a rolled away stone saying, why look for the living among the dead? In their mind, in their mind, was the agony of that day called Friday. In their mind, they saw the lynching tree, the tree on which the Savior was nailed to, beaten on, and crucified. What they saw was that there were not just one man dying, but three men dying. Can you imagine somebody being put to death for stealing? A loaf of bread? Mm -hmm. Three men crucified. Mm -hmm. 
at the same time. And this man, this Jesus, the one who walked on water, this Jesus who raised the dead to life, Amen. this Jesus who fed 5,000 in the wilderness, Amen. this Jesus who died too soon <coughs> and too early at 33, this Jesus who they thought that God would somehow send a legion of angels to lift him off the cross, this Jesus crucified, executed by the Romans, inspired by participation of his own, of their own, the Jews. They were afraid. They were afraid. And, and the text said, and, and I, I want to be clear with you, the text says, and they were afraid of the Jews. Not just the Romans, but John wanted us to know that not only were they afraid of the Romans and other folk, but they were afraid of their own kind. Mm -hmm. And I thought about what that could possibly mean. And I said to myself, does that mean that if you have a, one of your kind on the Supreme Court, Jesus, and they start rolling back voting rights come and they start on, rolling back affirmative action. Should we not be afraid? Come on. Yes. He said they were afraid of their own kind. You work for Coca-Cola, you work for Delta, you work for Walmart and when they tell you they're rolling back voting rights for your people mm. and you stand silent, they were afraid come of their own on, come kind. On, come on, come on. They were afraid of the Jews. When you have one of your own running for president of the United States, a Harvard graduate, one of the brightest men on the planet, and when he runs, his own kind say, I can't vote for him. Mm -hmm. He too young. We gotta let her have her turn. Then it, it's time for him. They were afraid <coughs> of their own kind. The ones who said, we, we, we don't care how they police us. Mm. We, we're not going to work for police reform. Mm. That, 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 that's something out of our, out of our league. Mm. They were afraid of the Jews. Mm. And let me tell you, when, when you look at this fear, I, I, I say the sermon is entitled Faith and Fear in America. Mm. We're living in a terrible time. Yes. A time of yes. anguish, yes. a time of fear. Yes. When Wayne testified, I was saying to myself, I feel the same way walking out of my house. I'm just afraid that one day a cop will pull me over yes. and slam me to the ground or spray mace in my eyes, even if I'm wearing the uniform of the United States of America. Amen. Come on, come on. Mm. Yeah. And Fear and faith. Mm. We thought after George Floyd it would be over. Jesus. Uh, mm -hmm. Who would have ever thought that a 13 year old boy who had no business being out at 2 o'clock in the morning, but with his arms raised up in compliance with the police, would lose his life? Mm -hmm. Jesus. What life is worth a man getting stopped for a traffic violation? And the woman reaches for her gun and says, Taze, and shoots him dead at 20 years old. Fear in America is coming home to roost. They're shooting up malls. They're shooting up salons. They're shooting up schools. America has 47 violent acts of shootings in one month. Not to mention that you've got 500,000 people who lost their lives. That's right. To COVID. Yeah. And you got some black folk talking about I'm not taking the shot. Jesus. When the majority of people who lost their lives looks like you and I. That's right. People who have this color, this beautiful color that Jesus. God gave us. Come yeah. On. Come on. These disciples were afraid. 
I, I can understand, you know, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd. I, I, I can just, I can understand uh, Dante Wright. I can understand why you would want to be afraid in America. Mm. Mm. You would, you would see, you'd want to have these conversations with your sons and with your daughters and tell them when you're, when you, when the folk who are there to protect you are the folk who are shooting you, mm. you need to be afraid in America. Amen. Amen. These disciples were afraid, but they've been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny? That's almost like an oxymoron. Why would you be afraid when you've been with Jesus? Mm. But Jesus knows our fears. Yes. And Jesus will show up at your house. Yes, he will. Lock door or unlock door. That's right. He will show up at your house. Yes. If you've ever known him, he will never leave you nor forsake. Thank you, As Jesus. he was with Moses, so will he be with you. And when fear enters your life, Jesus will show up. Now think about it. All these killings, all these murders, all this, that, all the CNN and MSNBC, and you gotta ask yourself, did Jesus show up. I want to affirm that I believe he shows up even when they don't announce his presence. Jesus. All right. He showed up for these 11. And you know, he didn't, he didn't really say, don't, don't be afraid. He just shows up and he says to him, peace. Mm -hmm. What the nation now needs is peace. Yes. What is it? We need, we need peace. And he says, I, I give you my peace. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. That's what he says to them. Peace. And when your heart is troubled, there's nothing like Come on. working with Jesus. a troubled heart. But God can give you peace. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You go down to the graveyard yeah. when you lay down your mama, your father, your sister, your wife, or your brother, and nobody could console you. No government official, no voice from the president, no notes from the military. But somehow, God shows up at a graveyard yeah. and gives you peace. Yes. Yeah. With peace like a river, a tender in my way, yeah. and yeah. sorrow like sea filler in my Whatever my lot. Whatever my lot. It is hard me to say. It is well. Yes. It is well yes. with my soul. Sometimes the world can, can wreck your life. Mm. Sometimes the world can hit you so hard, it's almost like a like somebody has taken a, a hammer and beat it against your chest. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And sometimes it makes you so angry, mm -hmm. so fearful, so upset, so discombobulated that you forget about God. Mm -hmm. And when I hear all this going on, I think there's a whole lot of folk who've forgotten about God and his wings and things like that. God ain't forgot about you. Come on! Come on! <laughs> he ain't forgot about you. Let me tell you this story. There was this woman who had been, uh, she has been faithful to the church. I love the story. She, she, she did everything. She played the organ <laughs> like Miss Burns. She, she, she ushered at the door like Ernestine. She, she worked in the, in, 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 with the Sunday school. She just loved church. And you know what? Because she loved church, told us that she loved God and God loved her. Mm -hmm. and, and she kept asking God to give her a helpmate. Give her somebody who walked with her. And God, God gave her the right husband. Mm -hmm. And they had a child together. They raised this child in church. They didn't, they didn't say go to church when you want. But when, that, when the doors of the church was open, they were all there to church. Jesus. Oh, nothing like when, when it all comes together. Mm -hmm. But you know, sometimes, like Job, Satan will knock on your door. Sometimes yeah. trials and tribulations will come. And That's right. You think you, you can handle it, but sometimes mm -hmm. when it hits you, it hits you so hard, it brings you to your knees and you yes. don't know where yes. to turn. And you ask yourself, why, Lord, did you let this happen to me? So she left the church because she was angry with God. She, she left the church because she felt that God had let her down. She left the church because she just couldn't face the people anymore. There was something bitter that had taken place in the middle of her heart and she just couldn't handle it. Church folk would go over, say, how 
how you doing? They called. She said, all right, but she couldn't wait to get off the phone because she had made up in her mind that God was responsible for taking the one person she loved out of her life, and now she had this daughter to raise on her own. She was upset with God. She was angry with the church, and nothing that the church folk could do could help her. You know, that, that, that sometimes, you know, you, you can't help people. Just, come on. I'm serious. There's sometimes that's all right. you're talking just makes things worse. Sometimes there's really nothing you can do. God has to knock on the door. Yes. God has to show up and bring yes. 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 Say it again. Yes. yes. Your girl, now about 15 years old, 13 when daddy left, two years they'd been out of church and they were going somewhere. And mama always said, don't touch my radio. I tell that to my daughter. When I'm driving, it's my car and it's my radio. I listen to the stations that I want to listen to. When I'm in your car, I put my earplugs in and play what kind of music you want to play. So she was messing around with the radio. They want, they'd gone to, to Piggy Wiggly and bought a bag of groceries and and she sat it on the front seat in front of the little girl. The little girl strapped on her seatbelt, and they were on their way home. And she hit the button on the radio, and Luther Vandross came over. Come on. <coughs> chair is not a chair when there's nobody there. And she was she was upset when she heard Luther because Luther was the go-to guy. Come on, tell it. He's the guy could, could bring could bring the love connection together. <laughs> When she heard the song, tears started to swell up in her eyes. Mm. House is not home. And, and, and just as she got into the driveway, she was trying to fix the radio to turn it off. And when she pulled in, she pulled up abruptly and turned off the car. And, 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 and she was just upset. She sat there for a minute, and the little girl in the buckle of her seatbelt was getting out of the car. She reached for the bag, but Mama reached over for the bag because she thought it was kind of heavy. And the little girl said, Mama, if you just, if you just let it go, I can carry it. Come on. She thought about what this little girl was really saying. And maybe it wasn't her speaking, but maybe it was God speaking through her, saying, Mama, if you just let it go, yes. give it to God. God can carry it. Yes. Yes. I say this about fear and faith. Even though Jesus showed up, he had to show up again. A week later, because there was one who wasn't there by the name of Thomas. And Thomas said, until I can see the nail prints in his hands and, 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 and in his feet, I, I, and the hole in his eye, I, I, I won't believe. And, and Jesus showed up. Isn't that strange that he'll just show up for one person? Mm -hmm. That one person is you. He will show up for you. Yeah, yeah, and when he showed up, yeah. he showed his hands. And he, and he showed the wound in his side. And I thought about Fanny Crosby, who was born blind. And she said to herself, she said, I can't see the Savior, but I, I will know him. <laughs> but the nail prints in his name. Yes. Say it, say it. Fear and faith. Faith is good. You gotta have faith, but you gotta have Amen. something more. After, the, after he showed up for the disciples, they said Peter went fishing. <laughs> I mean, he just, he just said, I ain't going back to ministry. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done with Jesus. I'm done with this. And he shows up. He goes fishing. He takes some people on. They fish all night, but they catch nothing. Mm -hmm. Jesus is waiting for them, saying, if you just catch your nets mm -hmm. on the right side. That's right. But Luke tells us even something greater. He says that Jesus meets the disciples because he realizes that there is something missing. And I want to say to you this morning that the one thing that's missing in all of us in, in America, where fear rules and where violence is, is, is crazy, isn't it crazy that they can stop a Johnson & Johnson vaccine that heal, that they've given out to 300,000 people or more because eight people get sick, but you can have 47 shootings and nobody does anything. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, you ought to be afraid. Mm. You ought to be afraid of the government that doesn't take your life and the life of your children seriously. And Jesus, he, he, he agrees on them. He, he, he meets them where they are, in behind closed doors, behind locked 
doors. You can't get away from God. He's inside the door and outside at the same time. He looks high. He sits low. He's everywhere at the same time. Jesus meets them for the last time. After, after he asked Peter, do you love me? He meets them again. And this is what he said. Ye shall receive something the police don't even have. Mm. Mm. You shall receive something that even the Supreme Court can't give you. You shall receive something that maybe mama didn't give you growing up or daddy didn't give you. You shall receive power. Woo, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Power to go into Jerusalem and Judea. Power to witness the police. Power to witness the government. Power to witness about the awesome God you serve. You shall receive power. Fear and faith in America is nothing to the power that God gives us. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.